All right, we're going to look at some tricks to remembering and memorizing the polyatomic ions to make your life a little bit easier, um, especially since there's like 19 of these last time I counted, and they each have a formula, a name, and a charge that you have to keep track of all together. So there are ways you can kind of chunk this information in your head so that you don't have to try and memorize all these different separate things. You can kind of figure out some of the polyatomic ions you don't remember based on some of the ways that we name them or the way that the formula shows up. So what we're going to start with first is a trick with this ATE ending that shows up just about everywhere. Carbonate, bicarbonate, sulfate, nitrate, chlorate, acetate, permanganate, dichromate, chromates, theosulfate, sulfate, carbonate, phosphate. This thing is everywhere. This ATE ending has a meaning. It's basically saying that we are just shoving a whole bunch of oxygens onto something. Um, where the front of the name is usually the thing is, is the element that's kind of getting all those oxygens. So like, if you notice, this carbon on the front means that we have carbon with a bunch of oxygens. That wasn't a very good arrow. Let's try that again. That's a little better. Lots of O's. Here we go. We're shoving this thing full of oxygens. Okay. Now, for some elements, it's a different number of oxygens than others. Um, so for a lot of things that end in ATE, that means three oxygens. So like carbonate or bicarbonate has three oxygens, three over there. Nitrate has three oxygens. Chlorate has three oxygens. Let's see. I think that's it. Um, some things can have a little bit more. They can have four oxygens. So like sulfate can fit four oxygens. Hydrogen sulfate, same kind of thing kind of a, an offshoot of the sulfate part. Uh, permanganate can have four O's. Phosphate can have four O's. Okay. Uh, chromate can have four O's. Starting to move it over there. And so on and so on. So in most of these, we're either going to have three O's or four O's. The only exception maybe is acetate that has two. Um, but for everything else, you can kind of shoot for three or four. So if you see something ending in ATE, you can kind of narrow it down to saying it's going to be the element that kind of starts the name, like nitri of nitrate means you're going to have nitrogen in there. The eight means you're going to have some oxygen shoved in there, and it's probably going to be three or four oxygens. Okay? And that's your best bet. Now, there's something related to the ATE ending, and that is the ITE ending. So, like, along with nitrate, we also have nitrite. Along with sulfate, we have sulfite. I-T-E instead of A-T-E. Let's see if there are any others. I think those are the two big ones. At least on the list of R polytonic ions, it looks like maybe that's the only two. Okay. What that I-T-E means is there's one less oxygen than the 8 version. So minus one oxygen. And it kind of looks like a zero. So it kind of looks like minus 10. So I'm going to say minus one ox, <laughs> if that helps. Um, so we're losing an oxygen atom from this. So NO3 is nitrate. Nitrite is NO2. Note that the charge stays the same. We're not changing the charge. The only thing that happens is that we lose an oxygen. Sulfate is SO4 with a negative two charge. Sulfite is SO3 with a negative two charge. So again, we're just losing one oxygen from that. So if you can remember nitrate, you don't have to memorize nitrate as some, uh, nitrite as some totally unrelated thing. It's just nitrate with one less oxygen. And same with sulfate. Sulfite is just that with one less oxygen. Okay, let's see what else we can come up with to help us out. Now, in a lot of polyatomic ions, we try not to worry about um, what the individual you know, charges or something like that are on 
these individual atoms. Uh, so like, for instance, if I wanted to try and figure out nitrates charge, like I'm, I'm in a bind and I know that it's NO3, but I don't remember what the charge is. And I might think logically, hey, maybe I just add up the charges on the periodic table. So nitrogen as an ion usually has a negative three charge and each oxygen usually has a negative two charge. So that's like a lot of negative charge, negative two, negative two, negative two. That would be negative six plus another negative three, negative nine. That's not what the charge is of nitrate. It's negative one. So a lot of times this doesn't help us. Um, where it can come in handy is when we tag on hydrogen to something. Okay. So like hydrogen carbonate um, or hydrogen sulfate. Let's make a note of this here. So with hydrogen carbonate or hydrogen sulfate, okay, we're relating to another polyatomic ion. Okay, we have something called regular old carbonate. Hydrogen carbonate just adds a hydrogen atom to that. So if you can remember that carbonate is CO3 with a negative two charge, you can figure out hydrogen carbonate. Okay, sometimes it can be a little confusing because sometimes we call it bicarbonate, and that's about one of the worst names we could have given it because that gives the idea that Oh, bias two, so there's two carbonates. Well, no, not in this case. It's an awful name, and I hate it. Um, so whenever I write out, I tend to use hydrogen carbonate because it makes more sense. Bicarbonate is a more common um, kind of old name for hydrogen carbonate, um, and so it floats around a lot, and a lot of people that will kind of die on that hill. But um, I tend to use hydrogen carbonate, or I give you both just because this one makes so much more sense. It tells you right there, there's hydrogen in there. So we take carbonate, we stick a hydrogen on there. Now, different than the nitrate nitrite situation, our charge does change. And this is where the periodic table can actually help you. The periodic table can help us figure out that hydrogen usually ends up with a positive one charge. Oh no. Sometimes my pen stops working. I have to take the batteries out and put them back in, and sometimes that helps. So let's try that. Well, hydrogen should have a positive one charge. No, nope, still not. We're going to wait for it to come back. But with that extra positive one charge, we're going to be a little less negative. So if regular old carbonate has a negative two charge, and now we've got hydrogen carbonate, with an extra positive one in there, negative two plus positive one gives us a negative one. So we're a little less negative, we're a little more positive. So that's how we get hydrogen carbonate to have a negative one charge instead of a negative two compared to carbonate. Okay, and the same thing goes for hydrogen sulfate. So let me see if my pen's working again. I just took the battery totally out. Hey, there we go. All right, so sulfate compared to hydrogen sulfate has the same deal. The only difference between the two is we tag an H on the front of it. So instead of just being SO4 for sulfate, hydrogen sulfate is HSO4. Okay, And like with hydrogen carbonate, the charge changes in this case too. When we're tagging an H onto something, we end up with a positive one charge extra. So let me write it on here, H plus. So we're kind of one less negative. We're a little bit more positive. So our negative two charge goes to a negative one charge. Okay. Let's think of some other things that might help us out. <laughs> well, since we're talking about hydrogen, let's talk about hydroxide. Okay. If you were to ignore this hydro part, I'm just going to kind of cover that up for a second. What we have is oxide. Well, oxide would be like if you have oxygen in an ionic compound, which usually has a negative two charge. Now, if I go and throw in a hydrogen on this guy, stick it on the end there usually, and I have a positive one charge, well, what's the total charge left? Well, I've got a negative two and a positive one, so I cancel some of that out, and what's left is a negative one charge. That's what I have for this polyatomic ion here. Now, this is kind of, I have to say this with a warning. Again, this does not work on a lot of polyatomic ions, but it does work on hydroxide. Okay? Hydroxide is basically just putting together a hydrogen cation and an oxygen anion. And what we end up with is, oops, 
O, H, and in total, we have a negative one charge. All right, let's see what else we can figure out. <laughs> Cyanide and acetate are kind of two of the trickier ones to remember just because there's not as good of a trick for them. Um, because the IDE ending too, sometimes you know people kind of find themselves looking for like, I'm, I'm looking for the cyan nitrogen or something I, uh, element on the periodic table. It kind of looks like you just took a regular element and changed it to IDE. Same with hydroxide. Sometimes people will see this and be like, oh, that's hydrogen as an ion. Hydroxide is just hydrogen as an uh, ion. But this is something totally different. You have to be careful about those two. Cyanide and hydroxide are a little bit tricky for that reason. Okay. Sometimes people will remember acetate because it looks kind of funny. It kind of looks like choo-choo when it's written out like this. Um, it's kind of fun to say when it's like this, C2H3O2. It's like kind of got a little rhythm to it, C2H3O2, C2H3O2. Um, you can write this either way, um, just kind of like how you can write bicarbonate as hydrogen carbonate. Um, it just kind of comes down to preference. So CH2, uh, or sorry, CH3COO or C2H3O2, either way is valid. Um, make sure that you have a negative charge in either case. Um, let's see. Oh, let's talk about per. There's a new color here. Per oxide and per manganate tends to kind of show up in a couple of these places. Um, and per means something specific. Um, typically, Switch this over here. Okay, so per tends to mean that we have one extra oxygen than that we would usually have. So per oxide, if you kind of like with the hydroxide one, kind of ignore the per part for a second. It's just oxide, kind of like oxygen as an ion. O2. But wait, sorry. This is O with a negative two charge. This per part then means we have just kind of one extra oxygen. So instead of just having one oxygen, we have two of them. Our charge doesn't change. It still stays as negative two. Okay. And you can do this with some other polyatomic ions we don't use as much in this class. So there is a version of chlorate out there called perchlorate which has one extra oxygen, so it's ClO4, and it still has a negative charge. Um, so another thing that you can use to kind of figure out polyatomic ions you haven't seen before. We're going to stick to this list in this class, um, but just to kind of show that these have meaning outside of this. Um, so this per typically means that we have kind of one extra O on here without changing the charge. Now, of course, it couldn't be that easy. Permanganate, you think, then means... There's got to be some regular old manganate ion out there that has MnO3, which would make total sense. And I just had to go fact check myself on this. Um, and instead, it changes the charge and it doesn't change the number. Of ah, so I wouldn't worry too much about the per. You know, this it's not one of the more helpful prefixes to know and be like, oh, that was, okay, that was, you know, one less oxygen or something, especially because it's only showing up once on our list. Um, but if you go on further in chemistry, it might be good to know. If it helps you, great, um, but I wouldn't focus too much on it. Um, let's see, what else, what else? So let's talk about chromate and dichromate. This is another one that it doesn't work as well as it should. Um, di tends to be a prefix that means two, okay, and unlike with the bicarbonate, we actually are trying to mean two in this case, okay, where we're trying to say there are two chromium atoms here. Okay, so we go from having one Cr in chromate to having two in dichromate, all right? Now, it would make a lot of sense if your number of O's would also double, but they don't. They go from four 
to seven instead of four to eight. And this is another one of the things I hate. It's like, oh, could you, uh, why could I just be eight? It would make it so much easier on us. Um, but it unfortunately doesn't. So, um, again, not as useful of a little trick to know, but if you can remember at least the dichromate means you're going to have two CRs, maybe you can just kind of lodge something in the back of your brain like, oh, this is the one where, where there's two CRs, but the number of O's isn't exactly double. So it's not like four becomes eight, it's four becomes uh, six, seven, nine, something like that. Maybe it was seven. So hopefully that helps. In this case, the charge also doesn't change. Okay. Let's see if I can pull out any other tricks. I guess I'm going to underline this part here just to kind of put the message through. Um, okay, I think there's one more thing we can kind of throw in. Now, I always forget how to pronounce this part, but it's either Theo or Thio. And I typically say, mm, well, now I'm going to doubt myself again. Uh, I also, I'm going to say Theo. Uh, Theo is a prefix that means that we swap out an oxygen for a sulfur atom. Okay. Now, kind of like the per and the die, uh, this prefix only shows up once in the polyatomic ion list. So maybe it's not super helpful to know just for this one polyatomic ion. But in this case, it can help you because we have sulfate to work off of. Okay. Sulfate has four oxygens. If you can remember that, we switch an oxygen for a sulfur. Switch. O into S. So instead of having SO4, we are down one oxygen down to SO3, and then one of those O's becomes an S, so S2O3. Instead of just having one S and four O's, we have two S's and three O's. Okay, so VO means we're switching out an O for an S. Okay, so again, if you can remember sulfate, you can make that switch. Again, in this case, the charge does not change. Really, the only time the charge changes from making a manipulation like this um, is when we're throwing on hydrogen. Um, so, yeah. Uh, that's all the tricks I can think of for now. Uh, there are also lots of videos out there that have tricks and songs and things for memorizing the polyatomic ions. So this is not your only resource out there, but hopefully this was helpful, um, at least to get some relationships between some of these to help you remember them, um, with a couple exceptions like cyanide and acetate, which are always just going to be a pain. Um, and sometimes you just got to kind of beat your head against the wall to memorize them and then move on from there. Hopefully this is helpful.